going on, everybody? I'm Dave Mays. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Breakbeat Media, and I am very, very excited today to be here for the first episode of After the Snow, the podcast that's going to take you deep inside the world of snowfall, and I'm going to be doing it with the only, one and only person who can tell the world the real story behind what you're seeing on Snowfall. And, you know, that's my partner, Freeway Rick Ross. What's up, Rick? Man, glad to be here, man. Excited about this whole ordeal, man, that that uh, that you set up. You know, I think it was brilliant that you came up with the idea. And and I'm excited to, to finally, because, uh, you know, when you start talking to people, they, and, and they start to say you're a hater, you know, no matter what, what they did to you or how uh, they neglected your relevance. Uh, if you speak up, you become a hater. And uh, I, I just felt that it, it was time and, and, and this was the right platform for me to, uh, to come in and, and critique um, so much BS that goes on in, in hip hop now. You know, when, when hip hop first started, it was uh, messages from guys from the street who didn't have a voice. And now it has come to where the people with all the media has all the voice and, and they're telling the people uh, who used to be from the streets or supposed to be from the street streets what to talk about and how to talk. So uh, I think that uh, I'm excited, you know, because I'm a real street guy. You know, I've been to prison. You know, I did my time and, and I actually walked the streets, you know, and I, I still walk the streets right now. You know, I still live in, in a gang neighborhood. Uh, um I still associate with, with gang members on a daily basis because I have to, you know, that's where I'm from and, and that's where I live and, and, and that's where everything I get come from. So to have this opportunity to, to now voice my opinion, you know, uh, uh, for me is, is, is unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's why, I mean, I was just so excited to be able to kick this off, you know, with you because, you know, you're someone that uh, I've always, you know, heard of in, the, in in earlier years and then got to know, but always, you know, looked up to, always kind of respected, um, you know, a lot of the things about you and your story and what I've seen you do to turn your life around. Um, I mean, you're, you're a legend in the hip hop and the urban culture. Your story is, you know, one of the most important stories, period, for hip hop and for black people as a whole in the United States. To understand, and um, you know, it's just it's an honor to be able to work with you and for you to share, you know, that insight, and for us to be able to kind of, you know, discuss some things, run some things by each other, because you know we've had a, you know, we've had a good relationship for a number of years, and um, you know, it's just it's just uh, you know, it's just a. For a sure. great thing. I'm excited what we're going to be able to do here. Absolutely. Well, you know, Esquire magazine said that my story was the biggest story as far as they was concerned for the past 80 years. I was a feature story in the 80th anniversary. Uh, they did give Obama the cover of the magazine. But, you know, when I go to the colleges and I show the magazine to the kids, you know, I make a joke that they gave Obama the cover, but they gave me the magazine. You know, uh, Obama got two and a half pages. I got 13 pages. So uh, uh, that lets you know how big that they thought my story was and how relevant it is, even though so many people in these industries try to, uh, uh, what's the correct word, nelegate uh, uh, or, or make my story look small or, or non-relevant or non-relevant anymore. You know, uh, Dave, I've been on every news channel in this country. Every single news channel in this country has done stories on me. Every newspaper in this country has put my name in the news uh there's four rappers that took parts of my name some kind of way so when people try to tell me that i'm not relevant or i'm not as relevant you know to me it's like you blowing smoke up my ass again you know what i'm saying like who you think you talking to you know i probably done more deals than any of y'all ever done so when you talk about doing deals i used to do hundreds of deals every single day uh, uh, so it, it just amazes me how uh, people will try to belittle you or or make you feel in, in, irrelevant to uh, 
to the situation. Yeah, well, they, they, they could never do that and they will never do that, you know, and that's why, um, you know, that's why I'm doing this podcast. And it also, you know, speaks to um, why I created Breakbeat. Um, you know, Breakbeat is something I just launched uh, a few months ago, uh, late uh, last year. Um, the first phase of Breakbeat is, is a podcast network. So, you know, it's a network of uh, different podcasts, different types of podcasts, different formats, um, you know, different uh, voices. Uh, but, um, you know, podcasting is just such a uh, powerful and dynamic industry. And I've been waiting to kind of find the right point in time to kind of, you know, bring what I do in terms of hip hop and media and entertainment and the way that I, I've always done putting together magazines, award shows, TV shows, you know, whatever events, things I've been involved with, you know, a certain level of just authenticity and, and credibility uh, to, to it across the board, not just in the content, but, you know, in the way, you know, I try to conduct myself and the way I do business with people. Um, so, you know, Breakbeat, I think, it, you know, has a lot of potential because as you said, you know, like hip hop has kind of gotten, you know, out of whack in a lot of ways over the years now. Worn it down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I just think we need a, a platform and a voice similar to what the source provided back in the day, you know, for the for the real information, for to build a community of people. Because I know there's a lot of people out there like me and you that think the way we do, that look at things the way we do. And, you know, in general, that's what hip hop does. It brings a certain mindset, a certain mentality, a certain way of looking at things. Uh, that we share, but nobody's really targeting that or tapping directly into that, at least not in, in, a, in a direct and authentic way. People kind of like to still tiptoe around hip hop and people don't really understand, you know, necessarily what hip hop is. And they look at just the music as, you know, the defining element because it's the most visible, popular aspect of, of the culture. You know, it's this huge multi-billion dollar industry now. Um, so, yeah, I just uh, I'm excited. And I think, you know, uh, this show and, and me to uh, host uh, my own podcast with you is is a is a, is a new step for me as well. Um, yeah. Well, you know, uh, when I first I first learned about you, uh, my first year in prison, uh, I got to uh, uh, I left MDC L.A. And, and I went to Phoenix, Arizona. And when I got to Phoenix, Arizona, uh, I was already dipping in, in the hip hop a little bit. You know, and and to be totally honest with you, I, I really slipped on hip hop because I should have been the king of hip hop. You know, I had I had all the opportunities there. You know, uh, I was working with uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Dick Griffey. Yeah, of course. I know, I know Dick Otis Griffey. Smith. Yeah. Well, I was working with those guys in, in, in the know. 80s. You know, uh, those were those are personal friends of mine. And okay. uh, uh, I played tennis with Otis's son. That's how I met Otis through tennis. Uh, he would pay me. Twenty dollars a day to go out and hit with his son for an hour, and the crazy thing is, is, is you know, I was young then, and I really didn't understand uh, 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 how business really worked, and and I was putting all my all my eggs in one basket. My my dream was to become a tennis pro, and and Otis would come to Dorsey High School and pick me up in a convertible Rolls Royce in in the seventies. Nice. I mean, you got to get on the tennis court one of these days, man. You know, I'm a, I'm a tennis player, and I, I don't think I reached quite as uh, you know as high a level maybe as you did. But uh, I played I played a lot back in my day, and still still get out there. So we got to hit some balls. Yeah, we we can do that. I I really just hit with my babies right now. You know, I'm I'm raising two pros, uh, tennis players. You know, I'm I'm gonna do what the Williams did, but I'm gonna do it with a with a male and a female. You know, I, I had the number one, both of the number one players in the world at the same time. <laughs> we'll break another record. You know, they they, they both uh, broke records for, for being number one in the world. And now uh, we're going to have a brother and sister number one at the same time. So that's one Can't of my wait. goals. But we definitely, we definitely can... Uh, can 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 hit some balls together yeah you know so so go back and finish telling me about how you first got the source back in like what's that 89 90 something like that well you know i just left mdcla right and uh uh me and harry o was sellies and they were working on death row and so when i got back to to phoenix 
the guys had this two little pieces of paper, right? And it said the Source magazine on it. So I was like, man, this thing could be big. <laughs> and so uh, I, at that time, I wasn't reading and writing. So I had somebody write a letter for me to you guys telling you that uh, I wanted to invest some money with you because I still had a little paper at that time, you know, uh, and uh, uh, we wrote you, but we never heard back. Oh, how did I not get that letter, man? I can't remember it. Yeah. You and then uh, I watched the magazine grow, you know, like uh, 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 from the two pages to, you know, where you were doing the hip hop awards and we watching you on TV and all this. And I was like, man, I, I remember when that thing was just two pages, you know, uh, right. uh, black and white. <laughs> it wasn't right. even color. It was just black and white. That's right. and, and I also watched how. Uh, how you did the unsigned hype, you know, with, with all the latest artists, the artists that you would pick to be the next ones up were the next ones up, you know, and it was just amazing. Uh, and, and I knew what I could have did with that type of information that you had. Like, man, if I would have had that type of information, I would be on top of the world, you know? Uh, so, you know, I was just, just, just amazing, you know, to watch you grow. And then finally, when, uh, when, when, when I got the phone call to, to, to finally uh, meet you, you know, and, and, uh, had a conversation with you it was it was it was a pleasure great man great yeah um yeah you mentioned um unsigned hype and i just want to tell the listeners and the viewers you know one of the projects that we're about to release on the breakbeat um you know i didn't got didn't really mention all the shows of course we got don't call me white girl that's our first podcast that's taken off i mean she's amazing um you know i always felt she was going to become a star when I first contacted her and she's already, you know, well on the way in just a few months. We got uh, Culturati with Kieran Mayo. That's an incredible podcast uh, for people to check out on all the podcast apps. Uh, my boy Chris doing Trapping Anonymous, uh, which is a really super interesting podcast that you guys can check out. Um, and there's a few more in the works. One of them is the story of the unsigned hype column as an eight part documentary podcast so we're doing that style of podcast you know um which is more of a, a storytelling format journalistic format uh within the podcast world that's huge uh there's not a lot of stuff <clears throat> you know <clears throat> excuse me of of relevance let's say to the hip-hop audience so i'm trying to fill that void so we'll tell the whole backstory of unsigned hype in in eight episodes uh, all the people that worked at the source, how we found those tapes, how we discovered Biggie and how I helped get him his record deal and Common, how he, we put him on and got him his first record deal. And we had DMX and Unsigned Hype, Mob Deep, um, Eminem, uh, David Banner, uh, Pitbull, Capone and Noriega, Jay Electronica. The whole industry, the whole industry. I mean, that was that was kind of like the thing to do. If you got an unsigned hype, you was big, man. You you was you was like the man, you know. And and everybody was looking for you after that. So and especially us in prison, you know, we did our time off of uh, 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 the magazine. You know, we studied the magazine uh, because one of my plans was to get into the music industry. You know, uh, uh, I, I found alcoholics while I was in prison, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I found the alcoholics. They, uh, you know, uh, when 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 I saw what Death Row had did, uh, I really got hyped, and and I jumped on the phone and I started calling everybody that I knew, asking them, "I need a rap group. I need a rap. Group. I need my own rap group." And uh, I hit King T, and he he uh, he put me with the alcoholics, and and uh, started the jail from there. But a few things happened to to, to curb where where that didn't work out. Uh, it was crazy. One of my partners had went to the hole and uh, he called me from the hole telling me, man, call my wife and tell her I ain't going to be able to call for a couple of weeks. And uh, I was like, well, what's the phone number? So I'm walking out and walked out of bounds. And then, uh, you know, my, uh, my my case manager, he didn't like me. You know, I told him one day, I say, uh, boy, I used to have boys like you working for me. You can't talk to me like that. And uh, he had he had an issue with it. So it's first time he called me out of bounds. He, he locked me up, put me in the hole. And that's really how uh, how I lost the alcoholics. When I got out the hole, uh, my man Fade had got him signed to uh, to Lyle Records. And, uh, yeah. you know, the rest is history. Shout out to <laughs> alcoholics, man. 
love yeah, those guys, yeah. man. Um, but yeah, hip hop. I mean, hip hop is a connector. You know, I mean, it's 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 obviously something that you you know are passionate about and, and love, and and it's been you know my passion and love you know my whole life uh, basically. And uh, well, our life is hip hop. Our life is hip hop. We live hip hop. You know, a, a lot of people think it, it's 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 just the music, but uh, you know, it's way more than just the music, man. Uh, you know, the documentary that Ice T did. You know, I was a part of that, uh, Planet Rock, and where he talked about how um, people took the dress code of the drug dealers. You know, they wanted to dress like us, they wanted to act like us, they talk like us. So, you know, hip hop is 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 more than just a. Uh, and, and, and you know, when 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 I started selling drugs. Selling drugs was a way to rebel on the system. It wasn't, you know, uh, I, I never looked at it as if I was poisoning the people. I looked at it as a way to rebel uh, from from the norm, you know, uh, uh, from cops making you sit on the ground, you know, from 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 being on welfare, you know, from from my mom's mentality, you know, go to church, pray, and 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 work a nine to five, you know, that that wasn't for me. That that's not the way I saw myself living my life. And, and uh, you know, I, I rebelled against it. You know, I, I rebelled against my, my, my dad, who, who I didn't know, you know, who never was there for me. You know, I rebelled against all of that. And, and I felt that, that selling drugs was one of the ways that, that I was showing my rebellion. Um, well, yeah, man, I mean, um, you know, your, your influence on hip hop is, you know, undeniable, um, you know, just in terms of, you know, in so many ways, and obviously it goes well beyond the rappers who've, you know, borrowed your name or names or different things uh, from you. I mean, you go back to, like you were saying, the essence of hip hop. I mean, hip hop, of course, was created in the 1970s, um, you know, in, starting in, in New York City um and then growing and spreading but um you know in the 80s you had the explosion starting with sugar hill gang and rappers delight and stuff like that these next few years have really brought it out as a commercial music but by the, the mid 80s you know by that 83 84 85 that's when hip-hop really starts to take that turn um to elevate into you know something that's much more than music something that's really a, a culture that's promoting you know knowledge and consciousness and uh you know being a, a, a you know the most you know uh, important voice really for what's was going on in the streets and in the hoods and the community um and that came with you know artists like you know you know run dmc and i think of songs like the message and then you know run dmc and then really you know when you get into krs one and rakim uh in 86 you know they bring a whole nother level of just lyricism and that consciousness that you know that's really what i would call the you know the emergence of the golden era of hip-hop and what you were a part of you know doing in those years um, you know, was was what the hip hop artists and, and the people making this music and culture were experiencing, you know, and living on a day to day basis, um, you know, within that world. And that's that's what really, you know, provided a lot of in inspiration uh, for many uh, hip hop artists uh, uh, from, from, you know, from that era. So, um, you know, with that being said, you know, I think that kind of can help us segue into this podcast and you know kind of the, the the subject and focus of this podcast being snowfall um i mean you know i i first started watching snowfall you know when it, it first came out uh five years ago um i watched it you know pretty religiously the first uh season or two um it's obviously grown and become you know a huge hit it's it's the number one uh, rated show on FX network, I believe, you know, over five, six million viewers per episode last year. Um, and, um, you know, it is, I think you would agree, you know, one of what you would call a few legitimate hip hop TV shows. I mean, it's a hip hop show, you know, some people wouldn't think of it that way, but anyone who's in hip hop would probably agree, you know, that's a hip hop show, just the, 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 the sensibility, the subject matter, you know, uh, different things, obviously, you know, John Singleton's involvement. I mean, he's, he's someone who, uh, you know, rest in peace to John, someone who, 
you know, was a pioneer in hip hop and bringing hip hop into the film uh, world and doing many other things and, and bringing a lot of other, you know, people and things and, you know, uh, providing opportunities over the years. But he's, you know, he's a hip hop legend. Um, and so, you know, I naturally was drawn to the show. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of folks know uh, you were never uh, made a part of the show and you've kind of publicly distanced yourself from the show, um, you know, these past few years. But um, yeah, I, I felt slighted. I felt slighted by the show. You know, I felt that uh, that they did like so many others have done, you know, rip me off and 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 not count me in and 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 for john you know uh i, I was really disappointed in john you know with the way he handled the whole matter because john had my number my numbers never changed uh me and john had numerous lunch meetings and and meetings and 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 um I, I just think that, you know, it's 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 fucked up to be to be straight up. I'm gonna be straight up with you. It's fucked up to have a partner that you're working on a piece. Even if he wasn't planning on doing the movie, he could have said, Hey Rick, you know what? I ain't gonna do the movie, but I got another story that I'm gonna do. It's a drug story about LA. How could I not have your number and not contact you? to ask you if you would be a consultant on the show. Uh, they went and got, I think they got a rapper to be, to be, to be the consultant about a, a drug, a drug movie. You know, it's like how, how, what's the word? I don't even know the word I'm looking for, but you know, it just don't make sense to me. You know, if I'm doing something and, 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 and I'm talking to one of the best guys that ever did that particular thing, why would I not consult him? Well, I know why he didn't consult me, because he knew I would have said no. I said, absolutely not. Why would you be doing a show so closely related to mine, where you even named the guy F Franklin? You know, you know, everybody called me Freeway. So what they did is they, they tried to uh, shape the show so that they could benefit off of my my love in the community, the love that the community have for me, but at the same time, not have to pay me any money or, or give me any credits or, 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 or deal with me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's crazy about Hollywood, but he's not the first one that did that. You know, they did that to me with my documentary, um, you know, cracking the system. It was number one on Netflix for a year and a half and they gave me no writer's credit, no producer's credit. And I haven't received a dime from the, from the documentary. I took money out of my pocket and put in, put in the documentary money that I didn't have. You know, uh, uh, but because they put more money in it than I did, the judge awarded them all the rights, you know, um, and and negated negated our, our our contract that we had. So when 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 I see mainstream uh, 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 coming into a system and people like me who've been to prison, you know, first thing when 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 I sued the rapper, as soon as we go to court, the first thing the judge would say. Oh, it's the rapper and the drug dealer. You know, like, I don't sell drugs no more. I'm no longer a drug dealer. I did my time. I did 20 years in prison. Uh, uh, I should be allowed now to be a normal person, a normal functioning human being that I should be treated like everybody else. But then, you know, they, they got rules that say, oh, you can't copyright your name if you use them in, 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 in the commission of a crime. So, you know, it's just so many things that, that once you become a convicted felon, you, you're no longer... A, a, a normal citizen now you become a, a, a second class citizen and you don't have the same rights as everybody else and uh people think that they can treat you a certain way and 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 uh i don't know it, it's been so much with this hollywood stuff you know I, I i've been working on on my movie and and my own tv series since i got out of prison and, and you know just dealing with some of these these clowns in hollywood you know they have absolutely no hip-hop spirit at all because with hip-hop it's supposed to be truth you know, truth be told. And and now it has turned to fake it until you make it, you know, so lie as much as you can. Uh, 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 just do whatever it takes to get to get by, you know, steal somebody else's credibility, steal their name. Uh, uh, it, it, there is no truth with, with a lot of this mainstream hip hop that, that we see today. And I think that in order to to get back to the essence of 
uh, of where it started and, and to get that feel that, that we all fell in love with, you know, we got to go back to truth and honesty. Yeah, well, that's, you know, going back, that's why I created Breakbeat. You know, that's the vision I have is to, to fill, you know, that void out there and to, you know, be able to work with people like yourself uh, and others to partner with to help build a platform that uh, can bring that authenticity, you know, uh, and thoroughness, you know, uh, 100%, uh, you know, across the board. Um, and so, um, you know, that's just, uh, you know, that's just one of my, my main goals, you know, with uh, Breakbeat. And then, you know, just going back to John and Snowfall, like, um, you know, it's unquestioned, it's unquestionable that Snowfall is your story. Um, it's not officially said anywhere in their press materials, but anyone who knows your story knows that, you know, this is your story. Oh, they, they know, they know, uh, when, when they put out their first commercials, the internet went bananas, bananas. They was hashtagging FX. They was hashtagging John Singleton. You stole Rick's story. You stole Rick's story. You know, my fans went bananas when they saw that. They changed the commercials. They changed the commercials so that they didn't have to deal with that 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 onslaught that they was getting because they went bananas on them. And and FX know, and if they had any right in them, they would contact me and say, hey, Rick, we don't, for one thing, I know they done ran out of material. They don't have no more material. They, 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 they creating stuff that now it, it's going to really, and eventually it's going to turn the people off because people are tired of fake stories. They want, they want some real stuff. And, and they saw the real in, in, uh, 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 snowfall. And that's what drove so many people to the story because people, they want, they want some real stuff. They tired of Hollywood picking who our heroes are and who we should be, uh, uh, looking up to. Yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't involved and I, you know, I did know John Singleton personally for a long time. Um, and, you know, like I said, all the things he's done, but it, it, it you know, I, I, it's very hard for me to, you know, to feel good about something like this being done uh, and you don't have any kind of involvement or connection to it. I mean, so I, I think, like I said, you know, there's millions of people now watching this show as, as I've been talking about this podcast, I'm finding, you know, tons of people don't know that it's just story. They just think it's a cool TV show. And I'm not sure where they think all these ideas came from, uh, but they all come from your, your real life, all the, you know, biggest themes that are running throughout this series. So, um, but, you know, that's going to be really, you know, one of the, one of the central focuses of our podcast is, you know, to um, tonight, the new season five, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the new season five of Snowfall, Snowfall premieres on FX tonight. So tomorrow we're going to be back with an episode. Me and you are going to watch the show, uh, the shows tonight, and we're going to talk about them tomorrow. And we're going to break down, uh, you know, what's happening in the show and talk about what's real, what's not real, what's, you know, made up and, um, and, and give people that that perspective, because I think a lot of, you know, the fans do want to know about uh, about all that stuff. And um, so we're going to we're going to bring it bring it to them with After the Snow. Uh, but we're also going to delve into the real subjects that, you know, your story and this TV show uh, represent and, and depict, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, the CIA's involvement in um you know bringing cocaine and crack into uh american inner cities um you know was was there a design you know to that plan we we you know it came out of course that uh the government was involved in trafficking cocaine to help fund a war in nicaragua that they wanted to overthrow the government of nicaragua and i guess you know congress wouldn't approve certain things. So uh, the CIA found ways to get this money to fund this war and it involved bringing cocaine into our inner cities. And, um, you know, at the time, uh, I don't think you were aware of the scope of it all, but um, certainly, you know, uh, you know, that's a huge um, subject area because, you know, not only, I think, you know, it's it's been talked about and you know there's been media that's tried to kind of 
whitewash the story or sweep it under the rug. But I mean, I think it's such an important thing because it's true. There's no question that there's, you know, truth to that. And I think for a lot of people who maybe in these last few years have been trying to become, you know, a little more aware uh, of, of racial injustice and systemic racism, you know, the whole, you know, uh, everything that's happened since George Floyd was, was, was murdered. You know, there's a lot of people who are woke up or who are really trying to understand things better. And, you know, I think this is, you know, something that people can look at and say, if this could happen, if the government could actually be involved in this the trafficking of illegal drugs to target the inner cities with a, a drug that they knew, you know, would, would have kind of, you know, these devastating effects on those communities, then how hard is it for you to, you know, believe all these other, you know, systemic things that have been done to, uh, you know, to, to basically um, disadvantage, you know, primarily black folks um, in this country and people still find it hard to, you know, believe how, how, how real and how, you know, significant, how many, how pervasive, you know, systemic racism is and in, in everything in, in our world and everything that has to do with the conditions for a lot of African-Americans uh, in our inner cities um, across America still, you know, still to this day. Well, you know, these new cameras, phones that we have on our on our phones now have brought our reality to the world. You know, uh, I, I know that when you're 14 years old, you can be riding your bike down the street and the cops will pull you over and have everybody sitting on the curve uh, for no reason at all. You know, strictly because you was riding bikes. Uh, I, I know those incidents and we're starting to see them now live and in living color, you know, which has been such, such, such amazing thing that the internet and, and, and the cell phones, uh, and with the cameras on them has, has brought us because had we not had the cell phones, we never would have saw Joy Floyd, uh, 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 you know, killed right there, uh, lynched as some people would say in, in, in live time and, 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 and living color. And hopefully, uh, these things will start to make more people think, about uh what's going on in our society because uh a lot of us have been living with that you know all our lives yeah so let's let's briefly talk about snowfall um you know i know you did start to watch it you watched the the first season at least so far um is that is that right yeah yeah we i watched <laughs> the first season it was torturous yeah. it's torturous man <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine man. yeah but uh but you know uh the production is, is really where I like the production, you know, and uh, uh, I've already saw some of the things that uh, that relate to my story. You know, I saw his mom uh, and, and it reminded me of my mom's when I saw it, when I saw the show. So it definitely uh, has has some feels of my story in there already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, you're going to have to get caught up on, you know, the first four seasons so that when, as we talk about starting with uh, the first couple of episodes of season five, you know, you'll be kind of up to speed. Uh, but we have some people, you know, on our producing team here also that are avid uh, Snowfall fans. Um, Got to acknowledge my uh, my uh, better half and, and uh, chief creative officer for Breakbeat, uh, Brett Jeffries, who's uh, a huge TV fanatic and former TV producer and uh, uh, has, you know, has definitely de dove deep into Snowfall. And even my business partner, Kendrick Ashton, um, he's a huge Snowfall fan and uh, he may be joining us from time to time. But we're also going to bring in uh, other special guests. I mean, uh, you know, people between you and me that, that we know um, who have, you know, interesting perspectives, not necessarily about the TV show, but about some of the issues, um, you know, that the show touches on and, and brings up because we want to really, you know, try to open up uh, this this huge audience that has an interest in snowfall to uh, much more of the realities underneath the, you know, the entertainment and enjoyable programming that you're, you're taking in uh, every week. For sure, for sure. And uh, yeah, I know a few people that definitely uh, would, would, would be brought in as well. Uh, matter of fact, there's a lawyer that, that was with me when uh, 
when we were doing the, the things with John Singleton. So he definitely would be an inter- interesting person to hear his point of view of, yeah. of Snowfall and, and, and the whole nine yards. But uh, yeah, I, I can't wait, you know, to start analyzing it. And uh, I'll definitely be watching the, the, the tonight's show, you know, to, uh, to, to break it down and, and uh, I'm going to do my follow-up. I'm going to keep doing my homework. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it don't be easy sometimes, man. You know, my plate be so full. I got so much stuff going on right now that, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I don't know, I got three or four assistants and, and they still can't keep me, keep me on track. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, life yeah. is good. I'm having fun. You know, and and that's the most important thing is 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 having fun in life. You know, uh, uh, when you're having fun, everything else is okay. That's that's right. That's that's a great message. Um, and um, you know, uh, the uh, the show, yeah, the show has so many interesting themes that we're going to dig into. And if if we're fortunate you know we'll get some of the cast members on here too because i think that'll be really interesting to talk to uh the young man uh damson idris i believe is how you pronounce his name who plays franklin and well you know we had lunch we had lunch together one day uh i was at uh, whole foods and he saw me and i didn't know who he was you know because i never watched the show and never watching it but uh he came up to my table and was like hey man i'm franklin in, in snowfall and you know, and my managers and my road managers, we was all together. I was about four of us there. And, and uh, I told him, I said, sit down, man. Have, have a seat. Sit down. Right. And we talked for a minute. And he talked about uh, how nice it would have been to have me on the set with him. Sure. That, that he would have loved to have me on the set uh, so he could have learned some more things from me. And uh, uh, that he was going to go back and talk to John and the producers about uh, bringing me on. You know, Yeah. Uh, uh, that's great I, yeah so so maybe great we can get him to come on he he may still have that same uh uh admiration for me you know sometimes you know when when you start saying certain things about certain situations you know people change uh their points of views on on how they see you and yeah well i'm i'm, I'm optimistic and hopefully we'll get him and some of the other cast members on here to talk i think that would be amazing to interact and discuss some of these things with you, me, and, and, and them. And uh, I would like to get some of the writers. Some of the writers would be interesting, too. I think that that, that would be, because uh, those are the creators, you know, those are the ones that, that, that bring everything to life. So I think that it would be exciting to have some of them on and, and maybe even some of the directors, too, you know, to see which direction, uh, uh, what made them go in that direction. Yeah, yeah, they have some, some, some great people. I think Walter Mosley is one of the lead uh, writers or has been for many of the episodes, uh, you know, uh, some other talented, interesting people that would be great to have. And, you know, we've, we've actually, you know, we've been in touch with FX network, uh, let them know what we're doing and we're, you know, looking to, you know, open that door uh, with them and, you know, be able to kind of collaborate in different ways. So hopefully that, that'll happen. Um, And uh, man, you know, um, I think we uh, I think we set the stage for after the snow here today. Um, you know, I can't wait to uh, to come back after we watch uh, the first. I think they're airing two episodes tonight. So we're going to have to watch two episodes and, and talk about those tomorrow. Um, and uh, man, I can't wait. I hope uh, I hope uh, everybody finds this interesting and that you'll tune back in you'll come you know subscribe on apple Podcasts or spotify you can subscribe uh to after the snow you can also go to the breakbeat media youtube channel and watch the show we're going to put out the audio uh on the first day and the video the next day so uh the audio for this show will come out um and then the following day the video will drop on the youtube um so hopefully you know Folks can, you know, may want to check it out on either or both, uh, both sides and uh, follow us on Breakbeat Media on social media, Instagram and Twitter, stuff like that. Uh, I'm at the real Dave Mays. Um, you give us your freeway, freeway Ricky Ross on Facebook and freeway Rick on Instagram, uh, TikTok and Twitter. That's what's up. Um, any, any final thoughts, Rick, or, or you want to just reconvene tomorrow? 
Well, you know, uh, I'm excited about the show still. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun time to to really break down uh, what's real and what's not real. You know, what was make-believe and, and uh, what was not make-believe. Because I think uh, a lot of times, you know, you know, you hear people say it, that, that hip hop has been one of the biggest uh, uh, fuelers for, for people going to prison, you know, because so many of these young kids believe that they can get out and copy what they see on these records and on these videos and, and on these TV shows. And and I'm one of them, you know, when I watched the movie Superfly, uh, I fell in love with the guy and, and I became Superfly. So, you know, we have to be careful to see that we plan in our young people's minds. And I think it's very important that we do something like this here to break down the what's real and what's not real so that when our young people uh, maybe take the notion to follow in Franklin's footsteps, you know, they'll know what the outcome is going to be. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Looking forward to it. So we'll be here every week with you guys. We've got another show tomorrow, and then we come back every week. Um, so, uh, you know, come along for the ride. Uh, get down with the breakbeat movement, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Mm-hmm.